So, so let me start with a multiple choice uh, timed assessment demo. So what I need to do is I need to um, multiple choice and make sure I can open it as test student. There might be some things I need to clear. Um, well, I need to use late pass. Oh, there is nothing I need to clear. All right. So, okay. So I have used the late pass. So the very first attempt, I'm going to chip my way through it. And I do mean it seriously that what I'm going to be doing now is cheating. None of you should be doing it. It's specifically prohibited the way it isn't for homework because it says no outside the help. Uh, so if you, you have a friend helping you during this timed assessment or a virtual friend helping you during the timed assessment, it, it's not a lot. It's against the rules. And uh, the part of the honor code is, you know, it's your honor. If you violate it and if you think, uh, oh, no one else can, uh, no one else can find that if you violate the honor code or not, well, you will know. And that, uh, that I think... Uh, as some um, deep level does damage. So, um, so what I'm doing <laughs> again is not a demonstration of anything that any student should be doing. Um, it, it's I'll just say it's me uh, as an instructor for this class, keeping up with the cutting edge of the material. So even though none of you should be using this outside help. I want to check the quality of this outside help. So let me get started. Uh, I'm going to try to go through relatively quickly because uh, this is now a competition between ChatGPT and me. Um, so I'll go through this first time with the ChatGPT and then uh, I'll go through it second time without ChatGPT hoping to beat it. So uh, let me first uh, pre-prompt ChatGPT so that it helps me cheat quickly. So hi. I'm working through uh, magnetostatics uh, multiple choice questions. Uh, with each question, can you give me the answer as correctly and accurately as you can? Um, and maybe briefly explain the answer after. And it'll say yes, and chat because ChatGPT is amoral, it doesn't um, it doesn't care if I'm cheating. Now, a good tutor at uh, uh, the LRC shouldn't be helping you chat like this, but you know, ChatGPT unless you make it good, it's not a good tutor. It's an amoral tutor, so it'll just uh, you know take the question and answer it immediately. It won't try to teach me anything unless I explicitly ask you to. Uh, it says D, all magnets have both nodes. And because right now I'm on a cheating mode, I've turned my physics brain off. I'm not even thinking if that's correct or not. I'm just cheating as quickly as I can. Again, this is nothing you should be doing. Although I will uh, demonstrate something that you could do that's, um, that's academically honest, but that's not what I'm doing right now. What I'm doing right now is without that, with the, without any hint of joking or insincerity, is cheating. Nobody should be doing it. Really? How? What's the chance that three answers in a row is the fourth choice? I mean, it could happen. Um, it's all randomly ordered, so uh, it's not like it couldn't happen, but... Mm. Okay, next one is B, so maybe there was a three in a row that's D, which again could happen. And it just looked too odd, but um, you know, uh, there's a, such a thing as a freak wave that happens in the ocean where um, just a random pa pattern of waves just to pile up in such a way where one there's one big wave every now and then. Um, like it, the stuff like that happens by random chance. So. All right, paste in the next one. That was, that's question six, and here's question seven. I'm staggering it this way to help me cheat more efficiently, uh, which is kind of, um, you know, <laughs> it sets a higher bar for me to beat later. In terms of accuracy, I don't think it matters, but in terms of time, if I'm still trying to beat ChatGPT on time, then this will make it that much harder. But, um, that I feels like a right answer. 
which quality is below? Yeah, and yeah, probably yes. Uh, I'm not thinking that clearly, but um, probably. Attractive person. Yeah. And. Yeah, I, I wouldn't call what I do um, prompt engineering just because, you know, I'm not putting a lot of thought into it. I'm just doing it on the fly, just to what comes to my mind. But like with that simple prompt at the beginning, it's really helping me cheat, you know, giving me letters. I don't really need to read this to figure out which choice it matches up to. It's, again, uh, the main purpose of me doing this is so that I know what's on the cutting edge what's possible technologically uh, so that you know i used to put a fair bit of uh, trust into this uh, multiple choice result because one of the reason for um let me just get the time all right so it's done it in like four minutes or less um yeah so when it turns to six to five so about four minutes let's say four minutes so it's answered all 10 and I think I marked it all the way it did. So let's submit and let's hope it doesn't get 10 out of 10. Because if it does, then I have no chance of beating it. Because I don't think I can beat 4 minutes on time. Oh wow. You got 10 out of 10. Um, yeah, yeah. I knew that they would have come. Um, so... Uh, yeah, so which means um, the best I can hope to do is a tie it, tie it in accuracy, which I'll probably do. Um, and the, you know, on time, I don't think I have uh, any hope of beating it. Because uh, how much time did I? 3.8 minutes, yeah. I, I, so if I try to beat it on time there, I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose on accuracy. So uh, I'm just going to try to tie it on accuracy and on time I'll just go as quickly as I can. And uh, for the people who are you know, trying to learn from these questions and interactions, <laughs> uh, let me just uh, uh, show. Um, so this is the question one. That's the answer it gave. Let me just read through the explanation and see if the explanations sound right at least because the answers are all obviously right. Explanation, okay. Uh, magnet have yeah they are all there's no magnetic monopole uh, always exists pair can uh, yeah a magnetic monopoles yeah have not been observed although you know theoretically if it existed it would make a lot of theorists happy and actually experimentalists so there's no reason magnetic monopoles shouldn't exist they just don't okay which is uh, electron fields no force it's uh, at rest right yeah because it's at rest stationary yeah. The force is uh, charge times uh, V cross B. And if V is a zero, no force. Yeah. Question three, uh, perpendicular in direction to the magnetic field. Yeah, that comes from the cross product. Yeah, because properly the cross product is, is that this vector F will be perpendicular to both the L and B. So uh, cross product means first, yeah, both of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I wasn't reading that when I was giving the answer. Question four. Um, let's see. Uh, most correctly compares electric and fields. Yeah, speed up a charged particle accelerating along the direction of motion V. Magnetic fields can stationary static magnetic field cannot be used to speed up a charged particle because uh, um, for the same reason because. Um, I guess magnetic field perpendicular to the velocity. Yeah, for the same reason as here, because the char moving charge version is it's Q V cross B. So force is perpendicular to V, meaning it's uh, perpendicular to the direction it's moving. So it can accelerate in the sense of changing the direction of velocity, but not uh, speeding it up. That's actually why I didn't use the word accelerate, but instead of speed up. Because here, uh, yeah, magnetic fields can accelerate a particle. If by accelerate, you mean like centripetal acceleration. So, all right, question five. Uh, compares electric electric force that may be attractive or repulsive. Yeah, that sounds correct. Yeah, both, uh, yeah, magnetic poles. Uh, yeah, and I'm sure the rest of the choices have some issues with it. Um, um, so let me keep going. <laughs> uh, so question six. Um, 
So if you are looking at a straight line of current coming towards you, the magnet will appear as uh, coming towards you. So it should appear counterclockwise. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, right hand row, turn, turn, you know, and your, you know, you know. Yeah, yeah, wow. I, so I know, uh, well, ChatGPT doesn't reason the way we do. And it's been, um, as you've seen in the past couple of weeks, it hasn't been that good with the uh, uh, geometric reasoning related things. But I mean, that answer is right. And I don't quite know where it's getting the right answer from, but it is right. Um, physical activity below which produce electric current. Yeah, that, that's right. Magnetic charge could produce magnetic field if it existed. But as far as we know, it doesn't exist. Uh, yeah, hypothetical concept. Not of, yeah, that's good. Uh, that's good. Uh, question eight. All right, two infinite um, parallel wires, uh, attractive parallel wires. Uh, parallel so same direction yeah and you might have seen this in one of the homework questions the if they're going the same direction force ends up being attractive does it explain let me see uh yeah so that's the magnitude and uh, your textbook has this formula so if they're using it from textbook fine um yeah so i guess it's just basically repeating some memorized facts um i hope you know how to work it out so maybe i could ask it this um so let me do that let me just uh, check the explanation for questions nine and ten and we might go back to question eight um, so my current carrying infinite long solenoid magnet uniform inside exactly yeah if it's infinitely long that's how it's yeah ideal infinite long. <laughs> yeah uh, yeah i mean you i would explain it based on ampere's law because, um, yeah, Ampere's law is much better way to argue it. <laughs> Question 10, uh, dispersion of current. Um, yeah, so here you definitely should use Ampere's law. Let's see what it does. The current, yeah, yeah, Ampere's law. Yeah, that's great. It even accents the letters that I wouldn't bother to accent because I can't type the accents on my keyboard. Well, uh, yeah, so it's good. Um, so let's go back to question eight. So I'll say, uh, going back to this question. So this is an example of how you could use ChatGPT in an academically honest way. Let's say you worked through it again, uh, or you worked through it, and you are outside of the time limit, you are not uh, getting this help while you are attempting the timed assessment. Um, outside of your attempt, and I do recommend that you study between the attempts so that with each attempt you are improving. And as you are studying, you can then get the help of ChatGPT, like you could get help of any tutor. So I could ask this, you know, trying to understand the answer better. Uh, going back to this question, you said um, this, and I'll just say, uh, I'll claim. Um, but I didn't understand why. Uh, can you help me understand this rule? And it'll probably go through the right hand rule thing, maybe. Uh, this is the kind of question actually that ChatGPT doesn't help with that well because um, it involves geometric reasoning. And one thing that ChatGPT can't do is it can't draw you any diagrams. So you will have to draw your own picture as you read these words. So let me see if I can do that. Uh, Ampere's law, okay. I'll get by one wire, through the wire, creates magnetic field around it, first. and that's fine. Concentric circles around the wire. Now following the right hand rule, um, if uh, you could follow it yourself, then great, you got it. If you can't, then maybe let me try asking a follow up question. The second, uh, exert a force on the current second wire, yeah. Direction the force of, uh, force of current in magnetic fields, it both yeah. So he, here it's uh, what's doing what's called the begging the question, as in it's asserting a statement as if it's true without actually proving that it's true. I mean, it's a true statement, so it's not wrong, but it's logically it's a logical fallacy. Uh, Yeah, the, it still has a feeling of, uh, 
I think it's uh, this part I'm having trouble understanding. Can you walk me through an example of the direction of magnetic field produced by one wire and um, how that direction would compare with the uh, the direction of current on the other wire. Maybe. Um, I, I won't waste too much time on this. Uh, hold out your hand with the thumb pointing the direction of current. Call your fingers. Yeah. Uh, now, yeah, it did say right hand. Yeah, that's the uh, how you apply right hand rule in this case. So imagine you have two wires, then this wire is producing magnetic field. So the current in this way, so uh, in the location of this wire, magnetic field should be pointing up. So, or, oh, they're doing upward. Upward, uh, curl your fingers, yeah, counter from above, yeah. Good, and then you point around the wire, counterclockwise circular pattern. So to the right of the wire, into the, pa into the page, uh, sorry, right of the wire, <laughs> into the page, yeah, 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 into the page and the, to the left of the wire, out of the page. Good. Uh, yeah. Second wire nearby. Uh, located on the right. Of, so he, this is my field producing wire. This is the force filling wire. So magnetic field points into the page, so flows upward. So you do I, I cross B and it's attractive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is detailed enough of a description that someone who's uh, reading it, following through, should be able to understand that, you know, you being a human being living in a three-dimensional space, you should be able to go through the motions with your right hand. Yeah, yeah. So this is a, a, an actual demo of a, a productive way and academically honest way you could use generative AI. Kind of, um, you know, as a way to dialogue about things that you feel like you don't fully understand. Thank you. So that's enough for stalling. Uh, I'm hoping to uh, tie with the chat GPT on this because um, I, I have no chance of beating it. <laughs> uh, I, I def I'm not going to try to beat it on time. If I tried it, I'm probably going to lose on accuracy as well. So my goal is to um, tie on accuracy if I can. There's a good chance that I can. And on time, just come as close as I can. Uh, I, I, I don't know how many minutes I'll be behind. If I'm like a minute or two behind, I think I'll be happy. So uh, because I'm trying to still do well on time, I'm not going to explain a whole bunch of things. I'll just go through it quickly. Because that's the only way I can go through quickly. But I'm not going to be so quick that I make mistakes. That happy medium is my goal. <laughs> so uh, this is my writing space. Let me get started. Am I going to need the numbers? Uh, in case I need the numbers, let me have Wolfram Alpha here, just ready to go. Uh -oh. All right. All right. With interaction between electric charge and magnetic field, moving charge, uh, yeah. I think that's right. Which of the statement below most correctly compares electric field and magnetic field? No, uh, this part is not right. Uh, yeah, I think we had this question before. Which of the following best discrete net force and net torque on a current carrying load? Net force is zero. Net torque depends on the directions. Uh, net force is zero. Uh, not constant. Depends on, yeah, that's right. Um, which of the following static might the zero network because perpendicular to velocity. The force is, yeah, per, yeah, good. <laughs> I'm not forming the right sentences here. Electric motor can consist of, yeah. Choose which of the following uh, electric motor. Oh, I guess it's about the torque. Because this isn't supposed to cover Faraday's law yet. Um, yeah, this is all nonsense statement. Um, current flows of force perpendicular to the torque on the, yeah, this looks like it. And there's a second piece to the motor, which um, will be in another uh, set. That one that covers Faraday's law. Ampere's law. 
it's not a current G arrangement. Yeah, flat plane. That's one of those. Uh, cylinder. Yeah, this is a, describing a solenoid. Uh, you, yeah, this this is not a thing. Um, I mean, you can try to do it uh, as a thing, but it doesn't have enough symmetry. Okay, solenoid current current type, which are the following does not depend on um, current depends on loop density. Yes, length it shouldn't depend on because um, it, it, it's. I mean. Um, to a good approximation. Um, I mean, if the length is super short, then... Uh, but, yeah, to a good approximation, it doesn't depend on the length. Uh, loop density does. Like, so the total count divided by L, it does. Magnetostatics, look here, applied length and dipole, yeah. Uh, which are the same Why a loop of current can be thought of as magnetic dipole. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> okay, this is not it. A <laughs> crane, uh, north, no. Uh, Magnetic field loop of current is perpendicular to a distance. Yeah, like a, a distance cube, the dependence and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, this this long description uh, is the correct answer. <laughs> so if you're going by length of the response, then yeah, I, I think I figured I could do it for one or two questions. I don't try. I try not to happy. Uh, let it be a statistically predictable feature. And being able to set up. Choose the most appropriate feasible for uniform over a small uh, solid. Uh, well, I guess solenoid could work. Uh, Helmholtz coil would be another choice. Uh, toroidal coils, like, how are you going to access the experimental region? Um, I, I, we had this question already, I think. Square current which goes through the shaded. So uh, there's a. So let's see. Um, so B dot DL has a positive quantity, so uh, going that way. So I think current into the page, and I think uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, did I beat it on time? No, I didn't beat. Uh, maybe I did. I don't know. That's four minutes. Let's just submit and then then see. Um, I think because uh, yeah, I didn't have time to double check, but I think I went slowly enough that I shouldn't have made a mistake. But you know, as usual, it'll be embarrassing if I don't get hundred percent. But I did, so it's not embarrassing this time. <laughs> did I beat it on time? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I might have be beaten it on time because uh, on the first attempt it was on for three point eight minutes, so it was for an additional. Uh, 3.9 minutes. Never mind. <laughs> I tied it on accuracy and I more or less tied on time. And uh, I think it, that was the place where I thought things were eventually headed. Because, you know, answering multiple choice questions, it is a kind of lower level cognitive task. It's the kind of thing that doesn't require a deep uh, knowledge of subject. So. On something like that, I can imagine, you know, like a calculators can multiply two three-digit numbers much quicker than I can. But, uh, you know, you if uh, you need to come up with some clever argument, the calculator can't. Now, ChatGPT might be able to sometime. But in any case, um, yeah, I, I, I'm okay where I am. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure on freeform time assessment, I still do better. And the one thing that I know I definitely can do that ChatGPT can, I can draw diagrams that are, that's accurate, that highlights the right salient features. I know ChatGPT right now cannot draw diagrams. Maybe it can in some near future, but right now you cannot draw diagrams that I know. So, you know, if I need to quiz people on things where I need to be sure that they didn't use ChatGPT, I'll ask you to draw a diagram. Because that's the one thing that I know ChatGPT cannot help you all the way. It can give you a description of diagram. Maybe with that you can actually draw it yourself correctly, but yeah. yeah. Anyways, that's it for the multiple choice demos. You got 200% attempts and um, yeah, it, uh, uh, it, it's it, it, it gets boring at some point. Uh, this is why I hear they added uh, the rubber pads to the table tennis racket because at some point the game got too boring. Um, the two skilled players, it would never end. They would be basically a tie. And uh, with the, the rubber pad, people could put spins on the ball so the game became more interesting. So anyways, now it's boring. <laughs>
So, 